Hello friends, the radiographs can often be confusing. As you can see in this radiograph, we have a shaft humerus fracture that was fixed with conventional locking compression plate. The fracture was reduced well and this was the radiograph at 3 month follow up. Now confusion arises what is happening here, whether it is uniting or there is evidence of a progressive non-union. Because for healing, what we say? We say that there should be evidence of radiographic healing. But if we compare these two radiographs, everyone will say there is no evidence of radiographic healing. And at this stage, some surgeons may get confused to open it, put bone graft and revise it. So in this presentation, I will be trying to clear the doubts regarding the healing process and the radiographs. The radiographs should not always be trusted. Why? Because the radiographic signs can often be confusing that we'll be seeing in this presentation. So this was the initial radiograph of this patient after fixation. The fracture was reduced well and it should heal by absolute stability principles. There may be some confusion why these cortical screws have been put. So in locking compression plate, we have the option of dual screw holes. So the compression screws are often placed when we want compression because locking screws do not provide compression. Either you have to reduce the fracture perfectly, then you can place all the screws in locking mode or what you can do, well, you can put one screw in neutral position and put another screw on the opposite side of the fracture in an eccentric mode so that there is compression at the fracture side. Then according to the bone quality, you can put remaining screws as locking screws or cortical screws. If the bone is porotic or poor quality, then definitely the locking ones are good. So talking about the healing process, it is not same in all patients. So the healing that may occur in three months in one patient may not occur in six to nine months in other. So there are things which are beyond textbooks that will be covering in this presentation. So before going into the details, we need to be aware of some basic principles. So the type of screws do not dictate the type of stability. So if you are putting a blocking plate in a MEPO mode, that means you want relative stability, then most of us think that we have to put locking screws only in the proximal segment. But it depends upon the pullout strength. If you have good bone quality, then you can achieve the same principle of relative stability with the cortical screws also. When you want an absolute stability, then if the bone quality is good, then definitely the cortical screws, all cortical screws will be sufficient. But if the bone quality is poor, you better go for at least two or three locking screws on each side. So that is something basic which you all need to be aware of. So the screws dictate the pullout strength. They do not always dictate the stability. And so in healthy young bone, cortical screws, alone may give sufficient strength that is required for stabilization of your fixation and locking screws are good when you are doing revision surgeries in which the hold inside the bone is not good and the bone is of osteoporotic nature now coming to our example so here if you see we have reduced the fracture here so it has been satisfactorily reduced so two locking screws have been placed in the proximal fragment one cortical screw is in the terminal part and three locking screws are in this segment so there should not be an issue because you are placing at least two locking screws on both the sides if you want to put the locking screws alone three locking screws on either side are sufficient because almost 50 percent of the stress is absorbed by the nearest locking screws then almost half of that stress is absorbed by the screw which is second to the fracture side and the stress on the third and fourth screws are negligible so three locking screws are sufficient whenever you are planning your fixation there's no point of putting four locking screws because the fourth one is almost useless that can be done if the bone quality is highly compromised like in osteoporosis so this radiograph in AP and lateral view appears to be satisfactory. The screws should not be an issue because the cortical screws have been used as the compression devices. The locking screws are the stabilization devices. So, so we will now think that it should heal without any coelus formation. That means the absolute stability. But you need to be aware of the healing process. The absolute stability does not always mean that you have contact healing. That means the cutting cones. There is something called gap healing also which is part of the absolute stability so you can go through this paper which is a good paper and also its references which tells about you the in-depth analysis of the healing process so what will happen now so after six weeks this was the area do you see any difference if you see carefully the fracture line which is here is becoming more prominent in the second follow-up radiograph in this part so why is it happening because in case of gap healing the new bone is getting formed in a perpendicular direction to the axis of the bone. So the bone is actually forming at the surface of the fracture margins. That's why it is going to show sclerosis in the follow up radiographs. And you see the sclerosis was more evident at 12 weeks. So here is the stage when it is very confusing whether to wait or not. Ideally, 
you should wait you have to see the other signs of failure if they are present or not and also the initial reduction if your initial reduction was perfect and then you are seeing such features that means bone resorption sclerosis then it is always safe and wait for further healing and also you have to check the other signs of loosening like here you see the screws are in good position there is no evidence of loosening the screw tips are at same level as in the previous radiograph that means there is no evidence of loosening at all so here is the time when the healing process is going to proceed towards the remodeling so that means the bone which was laid perpendicular to the axis of bone will now be converted into a lamellar bone that is along the axis of the bone and the gap you are seeing here is the fibrocartilage and it is going to be replaced by the new bone so this all process is happening in the gap healing so whenever there is some gap at fracture site that is less than one millimeter like here you see you are able to appreciate some gap here then the process of gap healing occurs so the sclerosis will happen in subsequent radiographs and that sclerosis will be replaced by lamellar bone along the axis of the bone so that is the normal healing process we should all be aware of this is the stage when we should not open or plan patient for surgery at all so sclerosis will happen somewhere here at the level of fracture site so i had posted a short video to see what is the opinion of the viewers so some of the viewers have definitely pointed out the right thing they've asked not to intervene and wait and watch so that is the best thing you can do you can definitely go for the less invasive measures like injection of prp bone marrow aspirate or even start the recombinant pth so they all are measures that can stimulate the bone healing process but opening the fracture site will disturb the biology of healing so you need not to touch the bone at all so this is the process of healing so we had no loosening of screws here but there was some gap visible here and also there was sclerosis and this was the ultimate follow-up after 18 months so we have to wait and see how things progress after this stage if there is no signs of loosening then definitely it is going to heal so this was a follow-up radiograph of this patient you see the bone which was earlier at the margins has been remodeling to a more smoother bone which is not sclerosed that means it is replaced by a lamellar bone which is along the axis of the parent bone so this was the ap view and this is lateral view so perfect remodeling has happened and this x-ray which earlier created a doubt of non-union has been replaced by a perfectly united radiogram so you have to be aware of all these healing processes that may actually create confusion at the radiographic level so radiographs should not be blindly trusted at all you have to see the other signs of failure as well like here you see we are able to see that there are some signs of loosening you see there is lucency around the screw side the maximum lucency is here so i told you the maximum stress is at the level of screw which is closest to the fracture site so maximum loosening will happen at this level then the loosening will be almost half of this screw at the almost half here at the second screw from the fracture site and at the terminal part i told you the stress is minimal at this site the loosening will be minimal so you have to see these signs they will tell you whether your fixation is going to fail or not whenever you have these features definitely go for a revision surgery but when there is no sign of loosening like perfectly placed screws here and there is some lucency here then better to wait and also your initial reduction will also dictate how things happen so if you have reduced it perfectly like this then definitely whatever the radiographic signs are there without any screw loosening then the fracture is going to heal unless there is pre-existing comorbidity which is preventing the fracture from uniting now some other examples so here you see we have reduced the fracture and placed all screws in the locking mode there is no cortical screw so that is also acceptable you reduce the fracture perfectly and put all the screws in locking mode so that is a perfectly rigid construct and the healing should occur by the primary process that means the cone to cone healing or you can say contact healing or you can say cutting cones so that is something which is the part of primary healing so this was the initial follow-up radiograph minor lucency can be seen at fracture site but ultimately it united well without any callus formation so locking screws are definitely acceptable when you have reduced the fracture perfectly but whenever you appreciate some gap at the fracture site it's better to put one cortical screw in eccentric mode so that you bring compression at the fracture site then you can place other screws according to the bone quality you can put locking screws if the bone is poor and you can place cortical screws if the bone quality is good you can also use the combination of these screws because sometimes what happens the terminal part of the plate is proud and you use a cortical screw to position the plate perfectly over the surface so that can also be done 
but whenever the bone quality is poor definitely go for at least two or three locking screws on either side now in this example here you see the pate could not be extended distally so the surgeon opted for a three locking screw construct in the distal segment so that is also acceptable i told you three locking screws are sufficient for diaphyseal fixation so this construct is valid and proximally the surgeon has used a cortical screw close to the fracture site and in the proximal part again he has tried to position the plate proximally with a cortical screw and this cortical screw is used for bringing compression at the fracture site but you see there is some combination a wedge fragment is there he has not touched it at all so how things will go in this case because he has brought compression at some site but there is commission on some part this obviously we are not going to fix it with relative stability because the fracture is more or less transverse with a small wedge fragment and we don't have a very long locking plate available for, for this case to bring relative stability nailing can be done but some surgeons are not familiar with that so x-ray reduction appears to be satisfactory and this was the follow-up you see this wedge fragment has been completely resolved at six weeks follow-up and you see the sclerosis has been happening at the fracture margins so what we are seeing here is a gap and the healing in some part is going to happen by the primary healing process of cutting cones where there is perfect contact but when there is not the perfect contact the healing will occur by the gap healing process you see here reduction is good in the lateral view as well as in AP view and the screws position are also good they are not loosening but there is some gap here so you see here how things progress the initial gap is going to get reduced as the remodeling process will gradually start the sclerosed bone will be replaced by the lamellar bone gradually so you see in this lateral radiograph this was at six, six weeks follow-up and this is at 12 weeks follow-up while we see the gap is getting reduced here in lateral view we can definitely see a bridging bone formation so all the fibrocartilage that has replaced the absorbed bone is going to get converted into a lamellar bone with the time so do not intervene surgically at this stage always try to go for less invasive measures like injection prp bone marrow aspirate and recombinant pts they, they all can be used but do not open better to wait only open when you have signs of loosening like i had shown you in the previous slide there are signs of loosening when there is lucency around the screw side definitely the healing process has started here we can definitely see good bridging bone formation the screw hole here which appeared to be vacant earlier has now been filled with a good bone so definitely do not touch and better to wait for further consolidation in this radiograph now here what you see we have fixed this fracture with relative stability there is different gap at the fracture side and some fracture line is also visible here and we are expecting healing by the callus formation so what does the callus do so callus is actually going to bring more stability at the fracture side so that is the purpose of callus formation and when we create a rigid construct without anatomical reduction the callus formation is not there and ultimately it is going to fail because the plate will be load bearing but here you see what happened some callus formation was seen but still there is gap at fracture side you see the sclerosis is also evident so in case of the secondary healing that means healing by callus formation also the fragments the wedge fragments and sometimes the fracture margins are gradually going to be sclerosed and they can confuse the surgeon whether to intervene surgically or not so here you see the sclerosis is evident here the and there is definite gap at the fracture site so this is at around six weeks uh, follow-up so here also you have to wait you see at the 12 weeks follow-up what is the radiograph you see there is good amount of bone formation here which is somewhat irregular that means not the primary healing all of the gap that was visible here has been covered completely because the remodeling process has started after the stage of sclerosis at the fracture margins so if we zoom in we see this is the AP radiograph. We we'll see good amount of bone formation. So the callus formation is not abundant in all the patients. Like this patient is 50 plus. So you don't expect a good callus formation in all these patients. You just have to wait for the stage of sclerosis at the fracture margins and then follow the patient again. After the stage of sclerosis, the patient should have the stage of remodeling at which the 
sclerous bone will be replaced by a smoother bone that will be in line with the parent bone in lateral radiograph also you see the gap has filled so the impending non-union which we were thinking in the in the initial radiograph has been completed into a consolidated union so you have to see all these findings at this stage you have to see whether your screws are perfectly in position or not if there is some evidence of loosening then definitely it is a failing construct you have to intervene at that particular stage and also the patient will also have some apprehension pain so these all features the clinical features combined with the radiographs can tell you what is happening but if the patient is not having any symptoms only some muscular pain no pain at the fracture side no pain at the implant side and there is no evidence of loosening then better to wait and see a picture like this now in this radiograph you see this is a distal humerus intra-articular fracture in which the fragments have been reduced perfectly the joint appears to be okay but there's some gap here actually the patient had a bone loss and there was a loss of wedge fragment here because of the open wound follow-up was like this this was at around six weeks of follow-up so you see the gap is here which is more prominent compared to the previous x-ray and the patient had shown to another surgeon for second opinion and that surgeon told the patient that this fragment is going into non-union and the patient was really concerned but but the radiographs didn't have any signs of loosening at all so we just reassured the patient and told the patient to come after next six weeks and you see what happens this was initially the radiograph and this is after further six weeks that means after 12 weeks of surgery you see how beautifully the remodeling has happened all this gap has been completely replaced by new lamellar bone which is along the line of the parent bone this is the critical stage when you all have to wait and watch and reassure the patient if there are no, if there are no signs of loosening and if your initial reduction during the surgery was perfect so the surgeon who had operated the patient is the best to tell the patient how things will go if you are getting a patient for secondary opinion also it's better to ask the patient to discuss with the operating surgeon because often when we see the radiographs like this things can go confusing if we intervene we are actually intervening in a perfectly healing bone we should not touch that bone at all because the nature has to take its own course so i hope these examples will enlighten you about the radiographic evidence of fracture healing they are not as expected in most situations you have to consider patient symptoms signs of loosening and the sclerosis at the margins and the initial reduction that you had done whenever you are planning for the revision surgeries you can definitely go for less invasive measures in doubtful cases but do not open so if you have any so if you have any queries you can just put those in comments thank you for listening